Hello and welcome to the good old days of radio show. This is John Tefteller, your host. Uh, today uh, we're going to veer away from comedy a little bit. We've been heavy on comedy the last few weeks and our Tuesday shows are, are billed as comedy, drama, or variety. So we're going to veer away from comedy and go into drama with The Adventures of Sam Spade. Now, I have played a number of Sam Spade shows since the start of these podcasts um, for two reasons. One, I like them a lot, and two, we get good audience response when I play them. So we're going to give you another one today. I do have a lot of Sam Spade. I don't have every program. I don't think some of them exist, or at least they haven't been found yet. But the ones that have been found are all pretty darn entertaining and fun. So today's episode is the Lazarus Caper from September 12th, 1948. Here we go. The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic, the non-alcoholic hair tonic that contains lanolin. Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. Uh, listen, you, uh, phone down to the drugstore and tell them to send up three gallons of black coffee. Who is this? I, are you sure you have the right number? I'm sure I've got the right number, but I'm not so sure who I am. Oh, Sam, it's you. You must have had a frog in your throat. Did you oversleep? Effie, don't say things like that. Oh, I'm sorry, Sam. Oh, you poor dear, you've been working. You're tired, that's it. Tired? I've only just brought Lazarus back from the dead. Well, then you better get some rest, Sam. You can dictate your report tomorrow. That's what you think. Now, stay where you are. If I'm asleep when I get there, wake me up. I'll be right down to dictate my report on the Lazarus caper. Dashiell Hammett, America's leading detective fiction writer and creator of Sam Spade, the hard-boiled private eye, and William Spear, radio's outstanding producer-director of mystery and crime drama, Join their talents to make your hair stand on end with the adventures of Sam Spade. Presented by the makers of Wild Root Cream Oil for the hair. Next time you buy hair tonic, be sure you buy Wild Root Cream Oil. For you see, Wild Root Cream Oil gives you these advantages. It grooms your hair neatly and naturally, relieves annoying dryness, removes loose, ugly dandruff. Wild Root Cream Oil is non-alcoholic and contains soothing lanolin. So much like the natural oil of your skin. Yes, friends, next time you buy hair tonic, look for that famous name, Wild Root. Get Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. And now, with Howard Duff starring as Spade, Wild Root brings to the air the greatest private detective of them all in the adventures of Sam Spade. In here, Sam, in your private office. Yeah, private, she says. I'd like to know what's private about it. I have everything ready for you, Sam. What's this? Ovaltine, to relax. I don't want to relax. I don't dare. Oh, there you go again, Sam. Going on nerves. How long do you think you can keep it up? With your help, I'll be in a coma inside three minutes. Thank you, Sam. Now, you just lie down here on the couch, and I'll take your shoes off. Now, look, uh... And I can take dictation while you relax. Nuts! Where's that black coffee? Sam, you're angry with me. Your eyes. Please don't glare at me like that, Sam. I can't bear it when you... I am not glaring. I'm trying to keep them open. Now sit down. I got to keep moving around. Oh, you moving shouldn't around. drive yourself like this, Sam. Uh, uh, please, Effie, please. Uh, date, uh, fill it in. Well, it's your life. Go on. Burn yourself at both ends. Yeah, let's see. Uh, two, uh, A.J. Tatspaw, claims manager, all risk insurance company, Tide Building, San Francisco. From Samuel Spade, license number 137596. Oh. Dear sir, the following is an accounting of my services to your company in connection with the claim of Emma R. Lazarus on the life of the assured Timothy R. Lazarus. The latter called at my office yesterday at approximately 11.30 a.m., he was tall, bald, gray-faced, and dusty. He looked as if he'd been buried and dug up several times. This, this may sound like a poor sort of jest, Mr. Spade, but my name is Lazarus, and I want you to bring me back from the dead. Well, sounds interesting. 
Why did you die? When did you die? And how did you die? I was declared dead by the appellate court of the state of California, August 28th last year, by reason of seven years' absence. Who took it to court? My wife, Emma. Insurance? Yes. My wife and I agreed between ourselves to insure my life in the amount of $100,000 that she would collect on legal presumption of death after my disappearance and continued absence for seven years. That's the law, Mr. Spade. Yeah, it's been tried a lot of times. What went wrong in your case? Wife double-cross you? If that's your attitude, I'm afraid I've come to the wrong man. Uh Uh-huh. You're still in love with her. Well, that makes it tough. You know they'll nail her for perjury if you prove you're still alive? But that's why I didn't go to the police. Even though we'd planned the deception together, she had reason to believe that I was actually dead. Suppose you cover the whole thing from the beginning, Mr. Lazarus. Yes. I, I, I married her back in 1940. And for a while, we were happy. And then she became restless. You mean you were not able to support her in the manner to which she was accustomed? She was young, lovely, you wanted her to have nice things, but on your meager salary, it was impossible. Oh, I know, it's an old story, but life is like that. <sighs> well, uh, you said it. Yeah, well, there you are. I was assistant cashier at the Golden Gate Bank. Oh, no, not that. I, I started taking small sums at first, meaning to repay them later uh, look, on. Look, let's not go through the whole script. How much did you embezzle? $20,000. Yeah, so you decided to take it on the lam before the auditors came in, and... I was going to give myself up, but Emma wouldn't let me. We, we made our plans that night, and uh, I left for Mexico the following day. In Mexico City, I had plastic surgery done on my face, and then I settled down to wait the seven long years until I would be declared legally dead. <sighs> I suppose you might call it poetic justice, but just before the end of the seventh year, I contracted malaria was confined to a hospital for more than 11 months. Mm, You have had it. The doctors gave me up for dead and asked me to notify my next of kin. I gave them Emma's address. I never notified her to the contrary because it seemed to to fit in so well with our plan. Too well, huh? Yes. I'd been to see her, and she refuses to believe that I am her husband. Of course, my appearance is, is, is very much altered, but there must be some way to prove my identity. You worked in a bank. They must have taken your fingerprints. I removed them from the files and destroyed them. How are your teeth? My my teeth? Teeth. Who was your dentist here in town? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, 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 Dr. Smith, the Drake Professional Building. He'll still have your dental x-rays on file. They're as good as fingerprints. You go there this afternoon. Don't give your name. Tell him you're Mark Humble. Have a new set of x-rays taken, and I'll do the rest. Uh, What's your wife doing these days? Why, uh, Emma... Emma's married again. Who's the sucker? Pardon me? The man. Oh, he's a doctor, Dr. Ernst Wilhelm. Wilhelm? He's quite well known, I believe. Yeah, and the cops would like to know more. Now, about my fee... uh... Oh, uh, Mr. Spade, I have no money. Oh, that's great. You have no money, and all you want is to hire a man to bring you back from the dead. And the more I succeed, the less chance I'll have of collecting. If I might make a suggestion, Mr. Spade, I... I don't know the ethics, but uh, perhaps the insurance company? You would be doing them a great service. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to live, Mr. Lazarus. They can't keep a good man down. I'll collect from them. I knew there wasn't a chance in 100,000 of shaking a fee out of your company. After all, you have your own investigators in the payroll, and contract work isn't deductible under the new tax law, but something about Lazarus had gotten to me. Something else about him got to me at the Blue Bottle Bar and Grill, where I stopped for lunch. Mr. Spade. Yes, indeedy. Uh, I'm Emma Wilhelm, Mr. Spade. Emma Lazarus Wilhelm? I see you do know who I am. May I sit down? Slide in, Mrs. Wilhelm. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to know you have a sense of humor, Mr. Spade. Hmm? It's about that man, of course. Surely... You didn't believe a word of his story. Which word? Oh, I'll admit there are slight traces of the truth in his raving. My first husband, Timothy Lazarus, was an embezzler. Mm -hmm. He did disappear, and it's quite true that I have collected the insurance on his life. I might even believe that Tim is still alive. But that man is not he. Then what are you so upset about? Oh, it's perfectly obvious what he wants. He's an extortionist. You're wrong. He doesn't want money, Mrs. Wilhelm. He wants you. Oh. Uh, Mr. Spade, how much do you know about my husband? Which one? Don't be flippant. Dr. Ernest Wilhelm? He, uh, 
made his first million panning lead nuggets out of gang war casualties and lost it on the stock market. He uh, cut his second million out of Knob Hill and called it surgery. He lost that on horses, blinds, and malpractice suits. The last time he was mentioned in the paper, there was a big picture of him pumping sleeping pills out of the stomach of an aging burlesque queen. It uh, may or may not have been coincidence that she did not recover and that she was the ex-girlfriend of one of our better-known racetrack haberdashers, and if he got a hundred bucks for the job, he was paid off in boom. Oh, please. Please don't say any more. That poor girl. And he'll do the same thing to me. Well. If you persist in helping that imposter, you'll be responsible for whatever happens to me or anyone else you involve. Mm-hmm. Anything else I should know? Yes. Both you and your client are being watched and followed. You can't escape him. He's not quite the has-been you'd like to think he is. After she had gone, I scraped her tears off my butter, finished my lunch, washed my hands with a nationally advertised soap, and mushed over to the Drake Professional Building. I found my client's dentist in his lab polishing up a set of gold inlays. Humboldt? Oh, yes, yes. His x-rays have come through. Only set today. They're on the clamp there. Don't touch them. They're not dry yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, what's your interest? Uh, police identification? You guessed it. Always happy to cooperate. Thanks. How about digging in your files for the x-rays on a patient named Lazarus? Oh, yes. Be glad to, of course. <clears throat> Well, let's see now. Larrabee, Lavelle, Lawrence, Lawson, Gluskin. That's G. What's that doing here? Ah, Lazarus. Timothy R. Is that your man? That's the name. Oh, Jimmy, April 1940. Should have been in for dental hygiene. Have to remind Miss Baker. That's my nurse. These uh, pictures, how do they compare with this new set? Well, now let's have a look. Switch on the light there, will you please? And let's see. Malocclusion, larva, cuspids, impacted third molar. Ah, erosion inlay. Yes, it's very interesting. You mean they're the same in both sets of pictures? Oh, dear, no, no. A uh, man's mouth could change a lot in seven years, could oh, it? Oh, yes, especially with dental neglect, but that would never cause a man to grow new teeth. Oh, well. You see here, Humboldt has one more lower incisor and two more molars in Lazarus. And the whole character of the mouth is different. Now, these two men would not look even faintly alike. Well, uh, could there have been some mistake in filing? Oh, dear, no. Miss Baker's been with me for ten years. Never made a mistake yet. Mm -hmm. Could I talk to her? Not in today. Been out since Tuesday. Cold. Oh, say, by the way, you're a detective. How's this for a mystery? She phoned me this morning and thanked me for sending a doctor around to examine her. Now, this is the peculiar part. I have no recollection of having done so, and I'm not acquainted with the doctor she said I sent her. That wouldn't be a Dr. Ernst Wilhelm. What? Why, yes. Wilhelm. That was the name. Do her another favor, will you? Call a doctor you do know and tell him to get over there as fast as he can. Come on, come on, open up. Keep your shirt on. I'm going to come in as fast as I can. What you want, kiddo? Which is Miss Baker's room? She's sick. Ain't having no callers. I'm her doctor. Oh, you can't fool me. Where's your little black bag? If I had one, it would be around your neck. Now, March, show me the way. You can't force me. I know my rights. Oh, you do, do you? Well, it might interest you know that your vents are faulty, your wiring is illegal, your drains are unsanitary, and your apron is dirty. Them's rust stains. I'm neat as a pin. You're as neat as a mud pie. Now get going before I have the Board of Health down on you. All right, but you can't make me climb them stairs. Come on, come Got on. sciatica I have. Here's the key. Okay. First door to the right. And whenever she's gone, I hope you catch it. Thank you, Elsa Maxwell. She was stretched out on the bed, her left arm twisted under her and her right dangling over the edge. On the floor beneath it was an empty pill bottle. A few red capsules were scattered near it, and some more were spilled out among the bedclothes. It was a standard sleeping pill suicide scene, but I didn't believe it. The body was still warm, but no pulse. I didn't waste time giving her the mirror test. Instead, I looked around for a phone. It was on a table near a window. I meant to dial the police number, Sutter 12020, but SU was as far as I got. Felt like a bee sting or a quick jab with a needle. I spun around and swung out blindly. The face that I missed was suntanned under a shock of iron gray hair. It was wearing the same white toothed grin that Dr. Ernst Wilhelm always wore for newspaper photographers. I started towards him and he backed away, still grinning. 
Come ahead, Spade. Come and get me, but hurry. You have only 20 seconds more. Shall I count them off? So far, you have three, four, <laughs> no. six, seven, eight, nine. floor kept dropping a foot at a time as I walked toward him. But every time I got to the bottom of the incline, it tilted up the other way and I slipped back. He kept dropping out of sight and every time I got him back into my line of vision, he was farther away. The walls of the room opened out and disappeared into some clouds. The ceiling spun around faster and faster until it whirled away like one of those flying discs. Then the floor turned into gelatin and I sank into it. Makers of Wild Road Cream Oil are presenting the weekly Sunday adventure of Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, Sam Spade. Now, here's important news on good grooming. If you want the well-groomed look that helps you get ahead socially and on the job, listen. Recently, thousands of people from coast to coast who bought Wild Root Cream Oil for the first time were asked, how does Wild Root Cream Oil compare with the hair tonic you previously used? The results were amazing. Better than four out of five who replied said they preferred Wild Root Cream Oil. Remember, non-alcoholic Wild Root Cream Oil contains lanolin. It grooms the hair naturally, relieves dryness, and removes loose, ugly dandruff. So if you want your hair to be more attractive than ever before, get the generous new 25-cent size of Wild Root Cream Oil, America's leading hair tonic, on sale at all drug and toilet goods counters. It's also available in larger economy bottles and the handy new tube. Get Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. By the way, smart girls use Wild Root Cream Oil, too, and mothers say it's grand for training children's hair. And now, back to the Lazarus Caper. Tonight's adventure with Sam Spade. The dream lasted about 300 years. Around Christmas time in the year 2247, another bee stung me. I opened my eyes, but the lights on the tree were too bright, and Santa Claus was bending over me with a brandy breath. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. A little willpower. You're conscious. Uh, that's it. That's it. Uh, sensation returning. Uh, here. Try and sit up. Uh, the girl. How about her? Uh, too late. Did everything I could. Suicide pact? Uh, one of your brothers in Apollo was a little too handy with a needle. Here's the mark on my arm, and you'll find one on that stiff. Those sleeping capsules were a plant to make it look like suicide. Uh, you'll be feeling better soon. Now, come along. Up on your feet. Must keep moving. Restore circulation. Yeah. Hip, hip. Uh, 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 thanks. Thanks. You, uh, you the man Dr. Smith called? Yes. So you're a private detective. Uh, how do you feel now? I'm still dopey. You uh, give me something to pick me up? I've given you as much stimulant as it's safe to administer. For the rest, you'll have to sleep it off. And you will. I advise you to hurry home. Get into bed before this wears off. How long have I got? A mm, couple of hours if you keep moving. Maybe three. Yeah. Mm, but if I were you, I wouldn't stay out. You don't want to fall asleep in the middle of Market Street. Get run over by a bus. Worst things can happen to you in your own bed. Look at her. Murder? You think you can prove it? I don't know. I couldn't. Not on her. And I've been an autopsy surgeon for 20 years. Well, cheer up, doctor. If you miss on her, you may get a second chance. Huh? Yeah, me. Mm -hmm. uh, those eyes are looking better. I think you'll live. I wasn't so sure. Unless I could nail Wilhelm before my three hours was up, it was a safe bet he'd nail me again with that needle. He had done me one favor. He'd convinced me that my client was really the man he claimed to be and that Wilhelm and Emma knew it. My best hope of smoking him out was to dig out some solid proof. I spent ten minutes of my three hours getting to the Hall of Records and ten more finding out there was nothing there on Lazarus but his death certificate. 
I had a gander at the wanted file at police headquarters. They'd checked him out in August of 47 when the court had pronounced him dead. I looked at my watch. With two hours and 17 minutes of wakefulness left, I just didn't have time. I stopped by Lazarus' hotel, got a set of his fingerprints and several samples of his signature, took them to a penman I know down on the mission, and between us we forged the most amazing set of documents ever assembled on one man. All dated, notarized, certified, witnessed, registered. One even bore the great seal of the state of California and the signature of the governor. I squeezed them all into a large briefcase, propped my eyes open with toothpicks while I drank half a gallon of black coffee, then phoned Dr. Wilhelm's night number. I told him I was one of Russian Leo's boys, and a cop had just winged me on the lamb from a jewelry store job. He agreed to meet me at his office. Hello, Wilhelm. Yes? Is that all you got to say to the guy you knocked off an hour ago? I'm afraid I don't quite follow. Who are you? Look, I know that you know, and you know that I know. They even wrote a song about it. So let's get off the dime and don't reach for a needle. This gun is bigger and it shoots farther. Well, I can see you mean business. What do you want? First, I want to show you a few things. Here, take a look. Mm Hmm? Well, this is very impressive. Yeah, I thought you'd be impressed. You, uh, need any more proof that Lazarus is Lazarus? What's the matter, Spade? Getting sleepy? Don't get your hopes up. I can squeeze this trigger in my sleep. Mm -hmm. Are these papers for sale? Why do you think I brought them to you? What's the price? Half the take on Lazarus' insurance. That's very high. I haven't finished. This time, Lazarus has got to be really dead and you're going to do the job. Come on, come on, stop stalling. I can't do that. Why not? Why, Emma, she'll make trouble. She said she would. She's still in love with him? Why do you say that? I just wondered. What reason did she give you for not wanting him knocked off? Well, the cops work harder at identifying a dead man than they do a live derelict that looks and talks like a crank. I had the same idea myself. Then you're stupid. With him dead, she can tell any story she wants to. With him alive and all this proof of identity, he's in a position to nail both of you for fraud, conspiracy, perjury. Shall I go on? Uh... One thing. Does Emma know about these papers? Sure. You're lying. Sure, I'm lying. And those documents are forgeries, if that's the way you want it. I haven't got time to argue. I can't stay awake much longer, and you can't bring it off without me. I'll have Lazarus at my apartment in 30 minutes. Bring your needle and the 50 grand. All right, Spade. I'll be there. I made two phone calls on my way to pick up Lazarus, one to Emma and one to Lieutenant Erlinger of Homicide. Dundee was asleep. The lieutenant and Sergeant Poolhouse were perched on the fire escape outside my window, and Emma was waiting in the living room when we got there. Tim, oh, my poor darling. Emma, you recognize me. Of course, darling, from the beginning. But I didn't dare speak out in front of Ernst. I know. Mr. Spades told me. Now, listen to me, you two. You're sure you can go through with this? Oh, are you sure there's no danger? That's him now. Come on, Lazarus, get in the bedroom yes. there. Now, do what I told you. Uh, don't worry, Emma. Oh, I'm so frightened. Quiet. Uh, hello, Spade. I got here just at... Emma, what are you doing here? Uh, m- Mr. Spade phoned me. I agreed. It's the only thing to do. I wanted you to know that. Well... I'm glad to see that you've come to your senses for a while there. You see, you were wrong, Spade. Did you bring the stuff? Uh, here's your money. I have a hypodermic in the case here, and it's already loaded. <laughs> we won't need a sterile needle. <laughs> Where is he? In there on the bed. He was asleep a minute ago. The grogginess that had kept coming back over me in waves for the last two hours swirled over me again as Wilhelm leaned over the bed where Lazarus lay, stretched out with his eyes closed. For a split second, I blanked out, and I was afraid it had already happened. But then I saw Wilhelm's hand coming down in the bleak angle toward Lazarus's forearm. Then my vision blurred again, and my arms felt too heavy to lift. <laughs> 
was Emma's scream that jolted me back. I clawed out blindly. <clears throat> Drop oh, it. You let go of it. You, you get it in your own arm. Let go. You swine. You double-crossing. Now, ah, here's a little sleeping medicine for you. <laughs> okay, boys. Come and get him. Good boy, Sam. Good boy. We won't forget this. Yeah. A likely story. I uh, get that broken glass, Paul House. Put it in the Dixie cup. I handle it careful. One analyze that medicine. You okay? Uh, who are these people, Sam? Accomplices? Yeah, but not for homicide. What about Ernst? They won't let him go free, will they? Don't worry. He's out of circulation for good. Mr. Spade. Yeah, Lazarus. I, I, I don't know how to thank you. Yes. You don't know what this means to us. Uh, yes, I do. It probably means another long separation. The state prisons aren't co-ed. But if you insist on being alive, you have to take life as it comes. A period uh, and the bedtime story. Oh, Sam, it's so sad. That poor couple so much in love. Mm. But you had to do your duty, didn't you, mm. Sam? Hmm? They had to pay their debt to society, of course. That's why you had to be so hard and unrelenting and not give in to your better nature. Oh, that's right, that's right. Never give in to the ship, pal. <laughs> Don't tread on me. It was uh, Hobson's... Hobson... Um, yeah, what was it that Hobson... Uh, you may fire when ready? You know best, Sam. <gasps> I'll just go type this up. <laughs> And now, listen to this. A good friend of the family. That's Wild Root Cream Oil hair tonic, folks. Wild Root Cream Oil grooms the hair neatly and naturally, relieves dryness, and removes loose dandruff. Now, get Wild Root Cream Oil at your drug or toilet goods counter in a new 25-cent Get Acquainted bottle. Also, ask your barber for a professional application of Wild Root Cream Oil hair tonic. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. Wake up! Oh, there you go, away. Your apron's dirty. Sam, I'm not wearing an apron. <sighs> then why don't you let me sleep? Sam, you've got to wake up. Your coffee's here. And tell them I'm in conference. No, Sam, no. The black coffee. You said to order three gallons. What? I couldn't carry it all. I'll make another trip. Twenty-four cardboard containers. You'll have to drink it up fast now. They're, they're leaking already. Abandoned ship, all ye who enter here. Oh, Sam, what am I going to do with it? Uh, open a restaurant. Good night. Oh, good night, Sam. Number three turret, open fire. <laughs> The Adventures of Sam Spade, Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, are produced and directed by William Spear. Sam Spade is played by Howard Duff. Loreen Tuttle is Effie. The Adventures of Sam Spade are written for radio by Bob Tallman and Gil Down. Musical direction by Lud Gluskin, with score composed by Rene Garrigan. Join us again next Sunday when author Dashiell Hammett and producer William Spear join forces for another adventure with Sam Spade. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. This is Dick Joy reminding you to... 
Get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie. It keeps your hair in trim. You see, it's non-alcoholic, Charlie. It's made with soothing lanolin. You better get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie. Start using it today. You'll find that you will have a tough time, Charlie. Keep on all the gals away. Hiya, Baldy. Get Wild Root right away. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. All right, Sam Spade, the Lazarus Caper from September 12th, 1948. Okay, we will be back next Tuesday with more drama, variety, and comedy. And on Thursday, we have a special series that is going to run 10 episodes. So there will be 10 podcasts of the good old days of radio show with the following topic and a special guest. The topic is going to be the great radio writer Lucille Fletcher. Lucille Fletcher was married to Bernard Herrmann for a while and wrote uh, what I consider to be many of the very best kind of weird and creepy stories of radio, especially as a female writer. And what the special guest we're going to have is a man named Donald Ramlow, who actually knew Lucille Fletcher and has some interesting stories and maybe even some audio to offer of Lucille herself reminiscing a bit. So we'll see how all that goes, but it's going to be split over 10 podcasts. We've selected 10 Lucille Fletcher programs, and you're going to hear one a week until those 10 weeks have expired. And I think this is going to be a fun thing, uh, and it'll be fun to have a, a guest here to do some talking. So it's not just me yapping at you all the time there'll be a guest. And we have some other guests in the pipeline, which you'll hear more about as we get closer. Um, trying to do a little bit of something different here and give you a little bit of perspective other than just mine. Um, mine is fine, but we need other people too. So that's it. See you on Tuesday for more drama, variety, and comedy, and on Thursday for the Lucille Fletcher series. Until then, this is John Tefteller saying goodbye. Thank you.